Ah, uh, so what a miss. That's the question. And the new name of the segment. It's a catch up. I have a few things I didn't really talk about necessarily, I believe, earlier in the year when they came, especially when they came out pro more likely around July ish, I think. Anyways, uh, three albums to talk about that I do have physical copies of at the very least. The others will have to wait and be talked about in passing through my year end list. So, what I miss? Let's start with the first album, which is... The Black Keys. Let's rock. So, yeah. Uh, this record, uh, to keep it short, uh, these are going to be shorter than usual, uh, by the way, given how much we've got to cover for the most part. 12 tracks, for the most part, the supposed comeback album after like maybe six years or yeah six years it's better than basically it's better than turn turn blue but it's given where they're at now in their career it's not saying much and people have kind of up and forgot about it especially given that this album came out literally a week after an another another band that came that took eight years to come back had decided to do so and that gives me more to talk about though as you've heard that uh, it seems like the band is, has, seems like it's having fun but it comes off force something you don't necessarily feel or hear going into the raconteurs help us stranger ah oh. Given less what I've had to say about Jack White's last album, it hasn't exactly, that album hasn't exactly warmed up on me. I, as much as I would give it credit, not nearly as much as Anthony Fantano, and uh, he's whatever with him. But as far as I'm concerned, and most people apparently just what most people will tell you the physical copies have sold fairly well given this is a day and age where it's more about the downloads and all this stuff in terms of sales but it's not only be surprised if that happened with this record as well or at least the past records on top of that as far as I'm concerned some people have decided to put this album in their album of the year category or at least someone by the name of ARTV and I mostly will end up agreeing with him because he's also the reason for why I will cons probably consider it with Jimmy worth surviving even though he put in honorable mentions. I don't blame him anyway. Especially when you're comparing that to the last album they did, that Jimmy Eat World did. But anyways, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the record tours. Finally, Brandon Benson, Jack White, together again, as well as a couple people that of as well as Jack Lawrence and no, no, I'm blanking on the drummer's name. Ah, one thing, one thing. Well, anyways. Uh, aside from that, it's nice. Finally, this band is back, and it doesn't seem like they left off. And this, with this record, they're in the they time frame middle ground. It this record literally is off from that, but also whatever Benson or and White and the rest of the members had done in other projects and places. It was this board like you heard in the opening tr portion of the opening track? I mean, Borden Rays is a great opener. Despite what most people tell you, I love the catchiness of Help Me Stranger. Good, nice little bluesy one. Only Child definitely is quite an interesting... Don't Bother Me is great. Don't Bother Me, I hate it at first, but eventually it caught on. I get some comparisons to the last Jack White record, but it was something that may as well be le a leftover that probably shouldn't have been a leftover, I guess? Because it was one of those better ideas. Or at least eventually became that way as it progressed. Especially going being utilized the way it does, especially with Jack White's more manic, manic vocals on this record. Not to the extent of uh, Big Three Kill My Baby, for my stripes, but level. But it's still pretty. It's still pretty solid. Sunlight on me is fine. Some days, 
It's an edge up was fine, but it's really the first thing I when I heard was Sunday Driver. I didn't care for it at first. I started to eventually like it even more, especially coming into this, especially when it comes in a little late in the, later in the track list, you know, as well as now that you're gone, that followed that up, which I did like more, though I will say it did get, did get a little bit, a bit too much more radio airplay than it did, probably did, should have deserved. And Live a Lie is probably the one track on here that I feel might be the only... Sonically isn't necessarily bad, but it's the only form of an hindrance I found on the record. What, what's yours is mine isn't bad, and Thoughts and Prayers definitely close, is an interesting way to close it out with a more bluegrassy kind of a thing. Something that seems more closer to what did work with Blunderbuss, I guess, I would say. There's, it's definitely more vain, closer in vain to the ideas he did with those two albums, I guess. Uh, and slight hints of what he might have done with the last record, but I feel like, in, in, I guess whatever Benson had been doing, I hadn't bothered to follow Benson as much. I feel like that might have been a bad idea on my end, but anyways, that's what I feel this record is. Is overall, this, oh, I forgot to mention the last, with the last one, Black Keys, it's kind of whatever. With this one, this one, I almost forgot to mention this, this, but this record, uh, it's definitely like, I feel like it could make top 10, depending on when, when I, when I finally crack down on it. If not, top 15. More than likely. Uh, uh, definitely just... It's deserving... It's a nice thumbs up that definitely grew into a... Or that I would have given earlier in the year when it came out. But it has evolved into to horns. I can't say it's a master class necessarily. I kind of want to, but I need to like revisit their previous albums to say that for sure sure so we're not we're not gonna go say it's master class at this moment however there's one album i kind of want to come close to saying that would come close to saying that and it's definitely making my top five we're probably making top five for sure depending on what other albums it may wind up having to look back on and that album is Thank you, scientist, Terraformer. Ah, oh, yes. And I, I'll even thank this album, this album for potentially another album uh, that it was album of the year material, and I need to get a physical copy of somehow. And that's. Uh, but anyways, which I will also recommend that record. Eventually, I'll probably talk about it, and I'll probably mind up making my number one because there's just. It's been the one album I think that uh, I want to say that for this record, but I can't. But it wasn't as it, it took a little bit for me to like it. It took probably close to around Swarm to kind of like it, but I wasn't fully on board just yet. It was like okay, we're getting somewhere. Bird watching kind of left me a little bit, but then Everyday Ghosts happened, and the hook the, there were some good hooks there and stuff. This record is. Despite what most people say, it's all over the place, but there's something that does ground even the crazy elements of this record together for being what is essentially a band that has been dubbed as progressive rock, progressive metal, and jazz fusion. More so progressive rock that has more so a progressive rock act that's metal is more lenient towards alternative. Their style is more alt prog, I would say with some jazz, with lenient towards jazz fusion. Uh, in the more modern sense, I'd say. <sighs> and definitely, I mean, Recoil is a great, uh, and a lot of what I'd say this record did that did also help it in its favor, it, that is, I also find slightly similar to artists of the more instrumental type acts that I would compare to, like, something you would probably... Hear. Like, I would totally listen to this while I'm playing Smash Brothers. And I wouldn't ever given the chance to play it. Or at least anything like Melee Onwards, like that kind of soundtracking. That type of OST, that's what's here. Though I will understand if the latest one, Ultimate, is more of something of another band that is slightly somewhat comparable to this band. This is, like, their fourth or fifth studio record. Um... They've had other albums. I've yet to fully deep dive. Other than this, they apparently put out a cover of Eddie Murphy's uh, My Girl Wants to Party All the Time. It's very interesting. So much so they, they their own spin while also simultaneously doing a uh, Amy, Wine, uh, Amy Winehouse reference. 
within the song, more so like the uh, most notorious of what her songs, Rest in Peace, I guess, uh, to her. Um, but yes, Wrinkle was, is a great opener. It feels more like a jazz piece. Uh, FX MLDR, or Fix Midler, or whatever, is, is what you heard portions of. Like, you can tell all the sounds are coming in. But, uh, just moments where you have vocal, especially when it comes to Swarm, there are moments where you have vocal styles like, Become! With, with horn sections kind of dueling with it. And you're having become, become. Now I'm not as like, you know, Claudio Sanchez. And that's another thing. If I did compare it to other bands specifically, I would say whatever happened if somehow the jazz fusion aspects of science, of Vicky Bits of Science, moved into the Scotland era, the follow up two albums that followed that would follow science, that particular sound of Incubus, and if it were instead of Brandon Boyd being fronted by Claudio Sanchez. Even more ironic given that this band's albums, past couple releases have, especially including this one, has technically been on Claudio Sanchez's label. Evil Link. So, and like I said, Son of Serpent, Birdwatch, I mean, Birdwatching, most people will talk about more, even though I prefer New Moon because it reminds me a lot more of like, you know, of, and sonically of like a shorter version of, or more condensed version of, uh, of, tra of Aquaeus Transmission off of, uh, Morning View that also wound up on the stealth soundtrack. Uh, but yeah, it reminds me of that era of, specific era of Incubus, and they started to bring that in and still had that sort of heavy and also had a continued interest. More of that, more all on the lines of say, uh, Anti-Gravity Love Song and uh, Deep Inside. Those specific tracks from that record, if they brought some of that more into the, what they would do on those albums, because that's what I get a mishmash of, and I think, and plus, if you somehow mix that together and they decided to do some, some Smash Brothers OST, this works and be a little more eccentrically experimental about it. That's what this band does, and they also have a very huge sense of humor. Uh, the title track is pretty solid. Uh, video's weird. Um, Anchor's not, I mean, the, their live songs are pretty close, if as long as, you know, are come somewhat close. Vocally, he's not bad without using whatever he's been using to allow him to do the things that he does do on this record. Good. Uh, I guess, I guess this is through a Helix Eye? Uh, but yes, Chromology is a great is a, the best of the jazz pieces on here. Uh, aside from Every Day, Germanimo is great. It does lose itself a little bit, but I don't. But not to the point of me saying that it's not a bad record. It's grown on me in places. Some moments it hasn't as much, I guess. But to say that this isn't an, uh, worthy enough to of your time, the talent is there. It might be a little bit jarring in places for some people. But if you're able to handle this, I'm definitely recommending that a uh, more on Police record uh, for sure. Uh, that kind of came out in August that nobody talked about until like the rock critics started talking about it and then everyone else in the rock Coliseum started talking about it and I wanted to have a chance to talk about it myself uh, when I could finally get a physical copy which would probably be very hard to do since they're not a very huge band I'd love for the to be able to talk about that record and get that album um, but yeah life even though life of Ruth Chandler Smith there's some funky moments and all this other stuff it's it's pretty awesome um, and definitely, if you've started on this band, this is a good. O this isn't a terrible way to open into them. Uh, and thank you, scientist. Thank you for Terraformer. And that's and of course, this album rocks. Near masterclass, just saying. And what did you guys think? And I believe so far, as far as catch ups, I don't believe there's anything else physically. I have on me that I can talk about. There's some other albums I will eventually get to that I've been going through recommendations on, and those are the only, and those are it. Guys, what did you think of all three of these albums? Almost. So, Black Keys, Tours, Terraformer.
What did y'all think of it? Leave a comment below. Let me know. Uh, rock that like. If you like this video, rock that like button with the rest of you must. Also, please hit that subscribe button. Click the notification bell. Hopefully, you'll find you'll get to see my stuff somehow. That way. Uh, also, link in description to my Facebook page. Uh, where like and follow me there as well. Um, if you're also into movie trivia showdown, you can also go there. But music-wise, uh, that's kind of that's all. You, my usuals is kind of all you got. So, and uh, yeah, and that, I think that's be about about it until I can finally talk about some other albums. And yeah. So always guys, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, y'all.